What is up, everyone, and welcome to Roby Tech, where I, Justin Roby, aka Roby, you know, you guys hear this so much, so much. But guess what? We're going to talk about tech with you wonderful people, whether you've heard this intro or not. Now, we're going to get you up to speed on everything going on in the PC hardware and gaming world. In today's episode, we talk about Lee and Lee's new mid-size case, yay! A new Half-Life game, yay! And real-time photorealism in Unreal Engine 4. So get ready. Yeah, I didn't yay on that, but I, I don't know what that's gonna look like, so I'm excited. This is Roby Tech. Lee and Lee. It's no secret we love Lee and Lee cases on Roby Tech. In fact, we have an absolutely insane Lee and Lee desk build coming up in December. Now, a while back on a previous show called Power Builds, we built in the awesome PC11 dynamic case by Lee and Lee and loved it. In fact, that case was Hardware Connect's case of the year for 2018. Now, it looks like Lee and Lee is looking to outdo themselves again with a sweet looking mid-sized tower that gives you a ton of configuration options. Enter the Landcool 2. Landcool 2. It just rolls off the tongue. From the outside, it looks sleek and exquisite with RGB lighting gently glowing through the mesh of the front panel. Its construction appears to be durable and well made out of steel. But this is where things start to get hectic because we've got flip panels all around, baby. Flip panels. It's like a Model X up in this place. That's right, making cable management a snap with cover plates all over the back of this thing. Quickly mount drives and SSDs with toolless trays and hot swappable backplates, longer PSU shroud for when you need that extra juice in your caboose. <laughs> Sorry, that's just an awesome statement. It, was, it has a removable two-way cable management bar in case you wanna shove an EATX board in this baby with a shoehorn. And it has a bunch of options for radiator support so you can rock that ultra thick boy radiator for your new Threadripper build and keep those hashtag beefy cores as cool as a cucumber. But one of the additional case options that has my jimmies rustled up is their vertical GPU mounting solution. One of the drawbacks of vertically mounting your GPU in the past has been that it's just dangling there in the inside, in your case, just just holding on for dear life by two tiny little thumb screws. But that's enough to make even a water-cooled GPU sweat. But this case lets you use a special bracket that connects to the top of the PSU shroud with the PCIe extender directly connected to the bracket, removing the risk that you might bend or warp your very expensive RTX 2080 Ti, heaven forbid, an RTX Titan, when you flip your table in a fit of rage when Ogdu Bogdu kills you in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order for the 66th time. And that's a real thing. He's actually very hard. Now remember kids, parrying is your friend. Now the case comes with a snappy, toolless RGB connector so you can add Mopawa to your machine with Lee and Lee's optional extra and USB-C Type-C connectors on the front panel. The Land Cool 2 comes in either black or white at $89.99 and $94.99 respectively. So this is an absolute steal of a steel case for under hundred bucks with all that customization. Wow, that price, I am like, given all the stuff I just explained, that price is ridiculous because like most of the Fantex cases I, I buy are like 200 bucks. So $100 is a steal. Now I think we're gonna need to get our hands on this for a future build. So let us know uh, what theme you'd like us to work with in the case in the comments below. Newegg, we really do need one of these cases. Andrew, I know you're watching this. How long has it been since we've had a new Half-Life game? All of the memes around Half-Life 3 confirmed are well, still unconfirmed, but Valve did release a trailer for a new game in the Half-Life series called Half-Life Alex. The game takes place between Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2, so it's a bit of a prequel of sorts, but the thing is, this is a VR game, so you need a VR headset to play this title when it comes out in March 2020. Now, from the announcement trailer, the world interactions look like they are going to be really dialed. The world looks amazing, and I don't know if I'm ready for the head crabs to be jumping on my face in VR. Ugh. But that is where Half-Life has brought us. Ugh. Now the puzzles in VR look dope, and the gunplay has come a long way since the infancy of VR shooters, so this is shaping up to be a solid VR experience. 
Now, none of this really comes as much of a surprise with the news that they are doubling down in the VR AR space with their work with the Apple on the new AR glasses and their own VR headset, the Valve Index, which if you saw last week's episode, we talked about those, or the last episode, not last week's episode. You get it. It's just an episode that's older. Now, what's interesting is that if you already own a Valve Index, you'll be getting Half-Life Alex for free, plus a little bonus content on the side. The game is supported by Valve Index, HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, and Windows Mixed Reality devices. But wait, there's more. Now with the release of Half-Life Alex, we are also getting a set of Source tool, 2 tools for building new levels for the game by the community with Hammer, Valve's level authoring tool. Getting updated with all of Alex's VR gameplay tools and components, so I can't wait to see what the community is going to come up with for this. Now, while you may not have heard of them by name, you probably are pretty familiar with their work. A while ago, Quixel released a video that showed off their photoreal scans from areas all around the globe, particularly Iceland. The demo of the real-time photorealistic textures and rendering inside Epic's Unreal Engine 4 left gamers speechless, like this. With how breathtaking the visuals were in the demo. Fast forward eight months, and after numerous tutorials, releasing their mega scans and mixer tools that work seamlessly with Unreal 4, Epic Games has purchased Quixel and their mega scans library and mixer texture building tools to integrate directly into the Unreal Engine 4. Now, one of the best things about Unreal Engine 4 is that it's free to download and use and experiment and try out on your own and only cost a user money if you actually ship something using. Use it. Using it. Whew. Ah. Now some more recent examples of Quixel's Megascan library in action is their recent series on building the gates of Ogremar from World of Warcraft and Halo's Blood Gulch in Unreal Engine 4. And I have seen that video and it is super, super sick. Now we are now at the point in game development where anyone can jump in and start building immersive worlds and not have the tech get in the way of their creativity to an extent anyways. Now making games isn't easy, but you should go try it, but it's not easy but making them beautiful just got easier. Just a little nugget of info here. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was made using Unreal Engine 4, so that's a pretty cool thing. In a recent press release, Sony announced that it would be creating a new division within the company that will focus on AI. For its initial launch, there are three major areas that they want to focus on. Gaming, imaging, and sensors, and finally, gastronomy, which is the practice of art. Wait, what? <laughs> No, no, I read that right. Imaging and sensors and finally gastronomy, which is the practice of art of choosing cooking and eating good food. Yeah, that's a thing. So what does this mean for gaming? I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on gastronomy. Well, it could mean smarter AI for NPCs in your favorite games. Could they react more human-like? Could games get more difficult and give a player more control over difficulty settings? Could we see a new game mechanic as a result of AI improvements in the game development? Who knows? But that's what's so exciting about companies like Sony devoting resources to AI. Now, Sony did say in their announcement that they plan to build an AI that will contribute to society. That's fair. It's transparent and accountable. But I want to know more about the gastronomy. Anyway, all good things when looking to avoid creating Skynet. <laughs> Are you still playing World of Warcraft Classic? Of course you are. Are you excited for classic battlegrounds like Warsong Gulch and Ultrak Valley to get added to the game? Of course you are. Are you wanting for more in-game content to be added so you can run more like Justin Moltencore and Anixia? Of course you are. It's time to ha slash cheer and slash dance because December 10th is when we are going to get battlegrounds added to WoW Classic. Earlier this month, the honor system for World PvP and World Bosses were added to the game, and Blizzard is moving on to the next phase with the additions of Battlegrounds and the Blackwing Lair Raid. Oh man, does that bring back some memories. Now while Blackwing Lair won't be available on the 10th, it will start an event before the new old raid launches later on. Players will see elemental invasions in Kalimdor, with blazing, thundering, watery, and whirling invaders appearing in Agoro Crater, Azara, Winter Spring, and Silithus, respectively. Now, Blackwing Lair and the Darkmoon Fair are both slated to release in early 2020, with details coming in a few weeks' time. Well, that's it for Roby Tech today.
Let us know what you thought about the news today in the comments below. How awesome is that Lee and Lee Landcool 2 case, especially at less than $100? Did you pee your pants with the excitement of Valve announcing Half-Life Alex? I didn't because we're sponsored by Depends. Okay, that's not true, but I, I, I didn't. I, I, did, I did hold it in. What are your thoughts on AI, especially gastronomy AI? I mean, that's a thing, right? Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head over to Mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific. And be sure to drop us a follow over on Twitter at Roby1Kenobi. Also, check out Instagram as well. Same thing, at Roby1Kenobi. Thank you so much for watching. Now, go look into AI gastronomy. Did you pee your pants with excitement? Well, if you didn't, I'll pee your pants for you. Hashtag beefy